Welcome to this week's Low Car Car Show. We are in the bluegrass state of Kentucky, in Bowling Green to be more exact, and we're about to share every Chevy lover's dream event with you. Welcome to the Tri-5 Nationals. Forty years. That's how long Marvin Mayer has owned his 1957 Bel Air. It was Marvin's first car that he bought when he was only 15 years young. Uh, it's gone through a few stages in its life, but the last time we rebuilt it was in 13. We took my brother and I worked on it, took it off, frame off, and took our time and put her back together the way we wanted it. It's got a small block 355, pretty basic motor, but it's got an F1 Pro Charger running eight pounds of boost. And at the flywheel when we dynoed it, it was 617. It's got a Jim Meyer front and rear end in it, uh, rack and pinion, tubular A arms, narrow nine, 390 gears, ride tech air ride. It uh, handles really well, stops really good with the bare brakes, the extreme six piston bare brakes. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good little ride. The paint is uh, obviously pretty custom. It's uh, silverine, we call it, silver and green. It's a, uh, based off of uh, Toyota Lex Lexus paint, but uh, it's got a lot of green pearl, a little bit of black pearl, and a ton of metallic in it. And uh, the interior is based off of uh, the exterior. It's got some inserts from the fins and a few other things. It's uh, got a black and jade interior. And uh, all the trim work was done by Stainless Steel Works uh, out of uh, Colorado. and. Uh, I like polishing, so it's pretty shiny. Uh, to be in the top 25 is an honor. The cars, there are so many great cars here that uh, to pick 25 has got to be extremely difficult, and I'm just happy that I was chosen as one of them. This is currently the third build of this 1955 Chevy Nomad since Ron Fister bought it at age 16. My buddy's a body man, so he's the real guy behind it, but I'm his helper, and I was involved in all the metal work and all the custom stuff. Well, owning a Nomad for so long, I've had a few ideas over the years, and I wanted something different, and that's why I did the tailgate the way I did, because I'd never seen it done, and I thought it'd be cool, and I, I think I succeeded. <laughs> it's a 99 LS1, it's pretty stock, it's got 315 to the wheels, so it, it runs okay. I got about 150 miles on it since I've, this, this build. I'll drive it again, but I'm showing it right now. I towed it out here from California, it was a long trip out and I wasn't ready to drive it that far. Well, I had, actually this car had a similar paint scheme when I painted it in 75. It was orange with a white roof and I had the same uh, spider webbing panels in the roof back then. But when I took pictures of it, or anybody took pictures of it, you really didn't see the roof. It didn't show up in pictures. So this time on this build, I was just gonna do an orange roof with white panels. And I've told this story all weekend, I'll tell it one more time. We roll it out of the paint booth and got it in the sun and it, it looked like a circus tent with the white on the orange. It was just too bright, too in your face. So then we started toying with different ideas to tone it down and decided to do the spider webbing again. And then I think the thing that really worked is he did that gold fade around the edge between the white and the orange. And he just toned it down and made it look the way it does. We'll be right back with more amazing cars on the Low Car Car Show, presented by Original Parts Group. The Low Car Car Show, presented by Original Parts Group, is brought to you by Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener, Brothers Truck Parts, your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GM truck restoration, Original Parts Group, World-class restoration parts, low-car performance products, quality, plain and simple. Chris Arnolds and I had a sit down at a SEMA event a couple years ago and uh, hatched the idea. It was Chris's idea. He thought the time was right for it and uh, he wanted to be on board with Dan Chuck because we're the biggest in the industry and we wanted to be on board with something as big as this. So uh, it all worked out. Lane Langley fell in love with this exact model car when his uncle bought one brand new. 
Three years ago, he bought his own 1957 Chevy Bel Air convertible. Well, when I was uh, 13 years old, I, um, my family, six children in the family, uh, piled in a 1952 Buick. We lived uh, in a suburb outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we drove to uh, Gallup, New Mexico to visit my aunt and uncle. And uh, my uncle uh, had bought a brand new one of these. It happened to be the year of 1957. It was the same color. And uh, I fell in love with that car when I was 13 years old and wanted it all my life. And uh, it took me 57 years to get it, but I finally got this beautiful car three years ago and love every second of it. The body and the uh, interior were done. Uh, it had a different engine, different suspension, uh, different wheels and tires. Uh, so I changed all of that, but uh, it was in this kind of, it looked very similar to this. Driving around with the top down is, uh, is one of the greatest things you can do. I mean, it's a sense of freedom and, uh, of course, everyone wants to take pictures and ask you what the car is and, and thumbs up. It's, it brings smiles to people's faces in addition to mine. But uh, it has Tahoe seats uh, and uh, has a Lexus console um, and uh, changed the size of the steering wheel. It had a big 17-inch, 18-inch steering wheel, which is makes it hard to get in and out of and uh, now that it has power steering it's easy to turn so we put a smaller steering wheel in it and uh, so we just made it modern so that it drives down the road nice it's much safer has disc brakes all the way around and stops good goes fast but stops fast it has an LS3 Chevrolet motor uh, 6 liter with a Magnuson supercharger and a comp cam uh, it's about 750 horsepower so it's just not a pretty face <laughs> Well, when you get on it, it just, uh, because it has so much horsepower and you can't put tires on it big enough, it just kind of spins the tires and uh, jumps up and down and makes all kinds of funny things. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. At 20 miles an hour, it'll break the tires loose and smoke them. And so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, a really a lot of fun. After years of Deborah driving this 1957 Chevy Cameo, the paint began to chip, and it was leading to the pickup being in a million pieces. Her husband, Doug, started a full restoration, and this is the result. Frame is a TCI frame. Uh, the uh, engine is a Ram Charger, or Ram Jet 502 Chevrolet crate motor. Tremec four-speed or five-speed transmission. So from one thing to another, it, it led that way. Now, she picked the colors for this car probably 10 years ago at least, maybe more, and stayed firm with her color choice. So we had to do the, uh, the uh, green and the tan. So that was, that was a firm thing. And a couple of years ago at the Street Ride Nationals, we couldn't decide on wheels. And we were walking by a booth, and she says, there they are right there. And never varied from that either. So they're, they're US mags that had just come out at that time. So. A friend from Florida asked Bob Thornton if he would store this 1955 Chevy in his garage. He did, but after seeing it in his garage, it took Bob only two months to decide to buy it. Uh, it was in primer, but it was didn't have, a, the chassis was no good. Of course, he took the motor out of it, and then uh, I bought a new, you know, an LT4 engine and a roadster shop chassis and had Paul Atkins over in Hansville, Alabama build the car for me. What I did when I took it to Paul Atkins, he actually got with a uh, guy that came up with a rendering and uh, sent me two renderings of the outside. I told him the color I wanted, red and black. He sent me a couple of renderings with red interior, black interior, a couple of different wheels, and that's how we came about with the colors. It's time for Low Car Lowdown with Jeffrey Walls. Today I'd like to show you our billet drive-by-wire throttle control assemblies. Each of our assemblies come pre-programmed for your Ford, GM, or Mopar application. They come in either the brushed billet aluminum you see here or in black anodized. They come with a plug-and-play harness or a fly-by-wire harness depending on the application that'll plug directly into your OEM computer for your EFI or crate motor. We also offer separately different pedal pads and arms to match either your other pedal pads in your car for your, 
your brake and clutch, or any of your other low car accessories. All of this is made here right in the USA, machined, programmed, assembled, all of it. Check it out on our website today, lowcar.com, and request one of our free catalogs. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show, presented by Original Parts Group. This 1957 Chevy Bel Air convertible had once caught on fire before a customer brought it in to Jason Brock to have it restored at his shop, Rock's Rod and Custom. I actually built this for a customer. My shop's name is Rock's Rod and Custom. I'm out of Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, he brought it to me as uh, it was actually had been on fire. It was a burn, burn job, so uh, we started over with it. We collaborate on ideas. We work off of each other and sit down and decide what we're going to do, and then he pulls the trigger and I build it. <laughs> it's a 572 aluminum heads, Hillborn fuel injection. It's got a 4L ADE transmission with a gear vendor, nine inch Ford rear end, uh, wheel width disc brakes all the way around. It's a roaster shop chassis on coilovers. That's ride height, that's where it sits all the time. <laughs> well, this is, a, this is actually its first outing, so we got some more tuning to do with the processor, but uh, it'll have about 600 horsepower at the rear wheels. I changed the grill, um, modified the turn signal bar and uh, added some little trim pieces on the quarter panels but uh, other than that the body is fairly stock you know the firewall's been cut out and changed for the engine transmission tunnel's been cut out and the uh, rear rear pan's been cut out to clear the suspension with getting it sitting that low and we wanted to keep it a traditional looking what would it could have been in a 57 so that's the 57 brocade and the centers. And uh, made the custom console. It's got the AC controls in the center of it. And those are 64 Impala bucket seats that I narrowed three inches. Dave Orlikowski bought his 1955 Chevy 210 sedan in 2011. And he finished working on it just two weeks prior to the Tri-5. Bought the car and drove it home in 2011, October. And in January of 2012, started tearing it apart and just have worked on it till about two weeks ago. We just kind of finished it up. It's been a long, hard process. Uh, just start at one end and just continue to go and change things as we go to make it better and better. And uh, put an LS1 with a 4L60E transmission, kept the stock rear end and modified it. Narrowed it up a little bit. New axles, Posi Track 370 to go along with the uh, engine and transmission uh, gear ratio and uh, have Ritec shocks on it. The uh, Willwood brakes, 13 inch Willwood brakes all, all the way around disc. The uh, uh, PRC radiator. I did a lot of the mechanical when it first started, and then I, when it came to the body, I took it over to Way Cool Customs in Pittsfield, Illinois, and Reed uh, just did one heck of a job. He did all the body work, basically, and did the paint and, and all the finish work, trimmings and stuff, and assembled the whole car. It has one mile on it. It's just really fresh, like two weeks fresh, so it's kind of out of the trailer and into the show. And so we got a few things we need to finish up when I get back home. And then we will uh, probably start driving it a little bit. I've been a Chevrolet guy my whole life. I've really owned nothing but Chevrolets. And I've always wanted to try five. And this 55 came available and, and here I am today. A dream come true. After his uncle lost interest in this 1955 Chevy two-door, Brian Smith decided to finish the restoration. I own an auto parts store in the town I live in, and we do this as a hobby. I've got a guy that works for me. His name's Robbie Bird. He does a lot of, he does most of the work on the car. 
Uh, there was another guy that did uh, the rest of the work. His name was Tony Collins. It's got a LS7 out of a 2006 uh, Z06 Corvette. It's got a 4L60E transmission, and it's got a, uh, we changed the cam in the motor. It's got a comp cam in the engine. Uh, we just finished the car the morning we came here, and we got to drive it around our town maybe a couple of miles, and from the best I can tell, yeah, it'll move. Original Parts Group Restoration Tip. Are you finishing up the restoration on your 66 or 67 GTO? Then Original Parts Group has just what you need. These beautiful zinc die cast bezels have thick chrome plating and a mirror finish. Available in pairs, these bezels come complete with all of the necessary hardware for ease of installation. They're manufactured to original specs and they are also manufactured exclusively for OPGI. You can find this and thousands of other parts at OPGI.com. We'll be right back with more amazing cars on the Low Car Car Show, presented by Original Parts Group. The Low Car Car Show, presented by Original Parts Group, has been brought to you by National Parts Depot. Make your dream happen. Appalachian Tourism. Virginia is for lovers. Croftgate USA, the only car care product you will ever need. Advertising Edge, the official uniform of the NHRA. Terry Cook has always been a Tri-5 fan, so he's here today to show off his 1955 Chevy, built from scratch, at home, for fun, all by himself. I would recommend anybody doing a rendering, you know to start with if you're going to try to do a real nice car. It, it gives you something to work with. I like the colors, you know. We kind of knew we wanted to go with them kind of colors, but with that rendering, he uh, he gave you different colors to look at so I can know what shade of green to go. We always knew it was going to go with the charcoal. We love that that urban titanium but would, to match that green with that, you know. You go shade up or down and really make it look worse. So. The path designs, He, uh, I got a hold of him. He did the rendering and helped do that, and it was a I do my own, all my own work except for the interior, and the interior is done by Oz out of Kansas. And so it, it gave me something to start with, you know. I, I, every time I left the shop, I could see the picture of it there and know what I was going to end up with. So that's why it didn't take as long to build, because I didn't have to sit there and think, can I do this or that? I knew what I was going to do when I did it, and I just started making and building, building it. So I owe a lot to him on that. One of the speed shop's customers wanted to cross one last build off his bucket list. So he brought in this 1955 Chevy Nomad. Well, we had a really good customer, an awesome local guy. We'd done some builds for him before. He always wanted a 55 Nomad. He did pretty much every other build he wanted to do on his bucket list. And this is the one that was left. So we uh, bought this thing out of Arizona and Project started from there. We, wanted, we set out to kind of break the mold a little bit. It's hard to build a uh, Tri-5 Chevy that's a little bit different. So many great enthusiasts out there and people have been building them for so long. So we chose a, uh, our customer originally wanted a red car. So we kind of worked on them a little bit, made a bunch of renderings, put out a bunch of different material samples and paint samples. And in the end, we came up with this, uh, this color combination. So I wanted a, a really luxurious interior and uh, we work with relicate leather and we, we looked at a lot of, uh, we, we had like some speed boats, some old Italian speed boats we were looking at. We had some cigar lounges. We want to create a really cool environment in the, in the interior of the car. I think we kind of, we hit it off, so. Imagine, imagine driving this down my small town of 7,000 people. Okay, can you just imagine driving that down, down the main street of town, people would look at it, and I'm gonna do that, man, look at it. Just can't believe it. Fell in love with it when I saw it in the, the concept of it. Fell in love with it again at the Sloan Center and, and now I own the car. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. I tell you what, uh, when we started this event in 2015, we had uh, good hopes but no idea that it would grow to this size. We had 2,717 cars uh, in the show, all 55 through 57 Chevys. And I think the thing that makes this event so special is exclusion. It's not the inclusion of having one of these cars, it's the exclusion of no other cars are allowed to come. And it's the, it's the recipe, you know, that and the giveaway car. And we couldn't have had a better winner this year. It was, it was fantastic. Uh, the giveaway car program definitely draws them in and uh, 
Come back next year in 2018. We've got a very special car planned for next year. And uh, you know, if, if you haven't been to this event, you can't in words describe it. It's, it's fantastic. I hope you come out next year in 2018. Each week, Croftgate USA Car Care Products picks the best of show from a low car car show. This week's best of show award goes to Matt Martinez and his beautiful 1955 Chevy two-door Bel Air sedan. I owned the car for about three and a half, four years, but it took about two years to build it. It's just a hobby, we do it for fun. It's, you know, I like, I like cars, I'm a car guy. I've been in the car business since, since I was a kid, so it's just kind of what I do. Five and a quarter horse, LS2 block with LS3 heads. Uh, Tremec T56 transmission. Um, we're trying to get into SEMA, so you know we're trying to keep it off the street a little bit. But it does have a couple two, three hundred miles on it, just trying to work the bugs out and stuff. But yeah, it's uh, it, it'll it'll definitely go. You know, I didn't decide to come down here until last Friday. So you know, we found out my son wasn't playing baseball this weekend, so decided to come down last Friday. And on the way down here, just so happened to get a room. It all worked out, and here we are. Didn't know what to expect. You know. I really didn't expect to see, I, I didn't expect it to be this this kind of a show, this big, you know. You always hear about it, you know, and that it's huge and a lot of cars, but being here, it's night and day different. And we sure didn't come to to win anything. You know, it's like you said, it's, a, it's just something fun for us to do and it's just icing on the cake. That's all we have time for from the Tri-5 Nationals in Bowling Green, Kentucky, where people came out to see some drag racing and to ooh and ah over some mighty fine ships.